All right, Lala Kent is speaking out on Jax and Britney's separation. We have a new episode of Pump Rules that is out now, and we're getting ready to gear up for the new episode, the new part two of The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills and Bet It All on Blonde, both of which are airing. It's today Wednesday. Oh, yeah, it's Wednesday. Happy hump day. Let's get it. You're listening to No Filter with Zach Peter, your go-to source for all the latest pop culture and reality TVT, Surf Fresh, all week long. Now, let's dive in. Hi, guys. Good morning. Today, I'm wearing another Nirvana shirt because somebody yesterday in the comments was like, I love that you're always wearing Nirvana shirts, and yet you don't even know the Nirvana songs. You don't even know the lyrics. It's like, you know what? I'm going to wear another another Nirvana shirt today. First of all, I only have two Nirvana shirts. Um, but I was thinking, like, maybe for the summer, I launched, like, a new merch collection that's, like, because I've been loving concert tees or, like, band shirts, like, uh, you know, throw Nirvana, Metallica. I've even been rocking some New Kids on the Block merch. I just love a good concert tee. And I was like, maybe I'll do, like, a a variation of concert tees that will launch as merch. Um, as merch this weekend, which we do have merch up, justplainzac.com slash shop. Justplainzac.com slash shop. So you can... Check out the merch, order it, stock up. Uh, yeah. Um, listen, this morning I already started off a little feisty because some bitch in the comments wanted to come for me. Um, I posted a clip. I was telling people to tune into my deep dives because we did a, um, a deep dive of the Rachel Levis lawsuit. We did an episode on Saturday and then another, another follow-up episode on Monday. So there are two parts to that um, breakdown of the lawsuit and looking at what everybody said and where she stands and what legal grounds Rachel has to stand on. Um, you know, what other legs she can stand on now that she can't stand on Sandoval's dick anymore. Um, but there was one woman in the comments and they were like, or two of them actually. And they were like, ah, you're just, you're a supporter of pedos and, and assault abusers. And I was like, really? Really? You're going to make such ridiculous and egregious claims? Then don't fucking follow me. Why are you following me? Bitch was still following me on Instagram. I'm like, why are you following me if you think I support abusers? Like, fuck off. That's how we're going to start Wednesday. Let's get it. It's hump day. Bitch, go get some humping going on. That way you can calm down. Oh, I came in spicy. Yesterday I was in such a good mood and I was like, you know, living life and just, you know, enjoying my week, the start to my week. And then today I'm just like, you know what? I'm a little feisty today. Lent is over. There's no more Lent. I know for Lent, I gave up being a bitch and I failed at it every day. And you know what? If anything, I, I hope Jesus is proud. I really do. Love you, Jesus. Listen, I grew up Catholic. Okay. I'm living my life. Um, okay. We have part two of the Beverly Hills reunion that is airing tonight. We get more of Kyle versus Dorit. We get more of Dorit versus Garcelle, I believe. I mean, oy vey, mama mia, right? We also have Bet It All on Blonde. <laughs> Bet It All on Blonde, Erica Jane special, two parts. I've seen it. Well, I saw the screener. I saw the rough cut um, screener that NBC sent me. I think it's really good. Um, I think that, you know, we get a lot of details and a lot of questions get answered. And there's a rawness and a vulnerability to it that I think, you know, a lot of Beverly Hills fans are really going to appreciate, especially if they've enjoyed or have come around to Erica this past season, um, which I think is, you know, is good. I know everyone keeps asking me while we're on the topic, everyone keeps asking me about this Marco Marco case, um, which I figured to me, there was nothing really to address. We've addressed on the podcast before and there aren't any really new updates. Um, but so to touch on it for everyone, there's if anybody saw the housewife and the hustler part two, which was on Hulu, which I've already said was a total cash grab because there was nothing new in housewife and the hustler part two that we didn't really already get in part one. And I was also really upset that like if Hulu and the LA times, which the LA times I've said has basically become the national Enquirer at this point. Um, if me and Matt Hamilton are in the same category and we're breaking down the same topics, I'm sorry, that's embarrassing for Matt and the LA times. Sorry, Matt. It's embarrassing journalistic integrity of the LA times has really gone down. Um, 
I don't know him personally. I'm just saying it, the fact that this is what the LA Times is choosing to focus on is Real Housewives, and they do a bunk, low budget documentary on where all they do is spend seventy percent of the footage rehashing old Real Housewives of Beverly Hills clips. Why don't we get into the real scandal? Why didn't the Hulu documentary talk about Christopher Camone? Oh, that's right. Not many people know about that. Hey, Matt and Harriet, why don't you do, you know, a deeper dive where we actually get to know who Chris Camone is? Who is Chris Christopher Camone? He's been arrested. Why was he arrested? Oh, yeah, because he was the bookkeeper at Girardi Keys. He was the one running the books with Tom Girardi. You don't really see him in The Housewife and the Hustler Part 1 or Part 2. Why didn't we know that he owned multiple properties here in the U.S. that he was selling off, seemingly liquidating his assets as he bought a new property in the Bahamas just before he got arrested? I don't know. Sounds like he was depleting all of his assets. How many assets do you see? How many properties do you see in the name of Erica Girardi? Oh, I'm sorry, because Christopher Camone had several here in the U.S. He was selling them when the scandal broke. He started to seemingly, I'm not accusing him, but just optics wise, kind of looked like, speculation, kind of looked like he was liquidating his assets because he bought a property in the Bahamas. He was on his way to the Bahamas when he got caught and arrested. How come we don't hear about him that much in the LA Times? How come he wasn't the feature of the Hulu documentary? No, we see these two dudes crying on camera talking about their Marco Marco case. And they're crying about how Erica Jane ruined their career right after they're talking about how they have big clients like Katy Perry. I'm sorry, if your client list includes Katy Perry, you really think a real housewife from Beverly Hills is going to tank your career? And we're completely glossing over the fact that this man admitted to committing a crime on the wire. He admitted to, I believe there was an email where he admits to fraudulently charging the Amex. Um, listen, it's. So, but the Marco Marco case is moving forward. Everyone's like, Erica had a loss in court. She didn't have a loss in court necessarily. It just means that the case is moving forward. The judge wants to see, you know, we want to, you know, look at all both sides of it. And, you know, the judge just decided, let's see what this case actually is. I believe she was looking to get the case dismissed and the judge said, nah, let's look at this. That's really the groundbreaking news where you see people like Erica Jane lost in court. She didn't lose in court. The, the case is just moving forward. You know, I believe right now there are still, you know, 11 active lawsuits. But like, listen, no, it's been how many years have we been going through this? We're still, you know, if anything, we should be focused on Tom Girardi's trial, which comes up in May. We should be following what's going on with David Lira. We should be following what's going on with Christopher Camone. These are the men that worked at Girardi Keys that were committing these crimes. So when there's not much groundbreaking news in this Marco Marco case, just because they were happy to get a little camera time on Hulu, like a lot of, you know, every little Kimberly Archie wants to come out here and get a little camera time and get their little glam up on Hulu. Good for you, boom. Good for you. Listen, Hulu reached out to me too. And I said, okay, how much do you pay? And they don't have a budget. And I said, okay, thank you. Um, so <laughs> whatever. Um, le let's get back to Vanderpump Rules. We have the Valley that's coming out. Is it next week already? Are we are we already here at the Valley? Um, yeah. Next or no, one more week. Uh the 19th is I believe when the Valley comes. Um, which I'm I'm actually looking forward to. Everybody was saying that they're complaining about the content on Bravo and it's too toxic and Housewives is too toxic. And oh my god, God forbid anybody, you know, oh Lisa Rinna the devil. Boo. Okay, well, now you have some wholesome content. You have the Valley. They're grown up. They have babies. They traded in bottle service for baby bottles, which is how they're marketing it. I'm looking forward to the Valley. I think it'll be fun. Um, I think it'll be less high stakes drama. Well, actually, we don't know, right? Because now Brittany Cartwright's out here teasing that, like, you're going to see the cracks in her marriage that are going to be on the show. And Lala Ken's the first Pump Rolls co-star to speak out about it, I believe. She was on Watch What Happens Live right after the new episode of Vanderpump Rules that aired this week. I'll do a full recap on Vanderpump Rules tonight. Me and Josh from Louisiana recap um, Vanderpump Rules every Wednesday. So I'll do my my regular Wednesday recap tonight. Um, and you'll get, uh, mainly because I haven't finished watching this week's episode yet. Okay. At dinner plans. Well, 
for dinner, I had three martinis, but <laughs> I had dinner plans last night, so I didn't get to finish watching Vanderpump Rules. Um, but I I did catch some clips of Lala Kent on Watch What Happens Live, and she said that Andy asked her about like what she thinks of Jax and Brittany and them splitting, and you know, is this potentially a publicity stunt? And Lala's like, listen, they don't need to do any publicity stunts. The Valley's gonna do just fine. They have enough crazy players, like it's fine. They don't need to do this for ratings. I actually think that this will help ratings regardless. And here's the thing. I think Jackson and Brittany are smart enough to know this will help ratings. So even if they're not necessarily um, looking to get back together or what, I know that they are leaning into this a little bit more because it's not going to hurt ratings. Right. Um, otherwise I think they would have kept it a little more on the lowdown if there really was something going on. Uh, but no, they're going to lean into it and they're going to get their paychecks and good for them. Right. Everybody knows how to lean into a good scandal and capitalize off of it. Everybody except for Rachel Levis uh, knows how to do that. But Lala says, <laughs> Andy was asking her about it. And she's like, listen, I always think you should leave the man. So she's very much advocating for Britney to leave Jax. And listen, she knows Jax. Lala knows Jax. Lala knows Britney. She's very close to Britney. Um, if she's saying it's time to leave Jax. Granted, Lala, I'm the same way, right? The best time to leave a relationship is always. <laughs> No commitment ever. Um, jokes. But like, I mean, do we think Jax and Brittany will find a way back together is the question, I guess. Do we think that, I think they're exploiting this for ratings. Um, and I think they both know how to play this game, but it's unfortunate. Um, we'll see where they go though. But what do you guys think? Do you think that there's a way for Jax and Brittany to find their way back to each other? I hope so. Um, we also saw, uh, Katie was dragging Sheena, um, in the after show, which this is also very strange to me because in this week's episode, which I did catch clips and I, and I saw the beginning of it, um, we see Sheena having a hard time connecting with Sandoval and her feeling conflicted because she says that during the pandemic, she was really struggling financially and Sandoval sent her a PayPal with a few thousand dollars a few thousand or a couple thousand dollars, right? And listen, I get it. Um, you know, pandemic was tough. Vanderpump was on hold. Stassi, Kristen, Jax had just gotten fired. It was a whole scandal. Like it was, you know, it was a whole thing. Everybody was expecting Vanderpump to, you know, keep going consistently. And the next thing you know, it had just continued to get put on ice until they decided to bring it back a year later. I don't even think they filmed for a whole year, right? And she said that she was having a hard time. Sandoval sent her some money. And, you know, and she's saying that that's conflicting for her. And then we see Katie and Ariana on the after show. And they're just like, Katie's like, I don't know why that's so conflicting for her. Sandoval does stuff like this all the time. He gives people money all the time. He paid for James and Raquel's engagement. He does stuff like that. And it's weird. I think he's doing it because it's manipulative. Listen, Sandoval is a very flawed man. He has very, I don't think he's a narcissist, but I do think he has some strong narcissistic tendencies. Um, but listen, is he, do I think he sent Sheena money to buy her loyalty? No. I mean, as listen, I try to be very generous with my money. When my friends need money, I'm happy to support them. I'm, I like to buy dinner for people. I like to cover drinks. You know, even when we went to Vegas for Erica's residency last summer, I invited my friends and I was like, listen, come to Vegas. If you can fly yourselves there, you know, I'll try to get us some, uh, or at least get us a room block so we get discounted rooms at the hotels. But um, everyone covered their own expenses getting there. But like, I bought us the table at the, the Vegas residency. I didn't ask Erica for a freebie. I bought a table. I didn't ask my friends for any of that. You know, everyone wanted to go see Zed that night. I got us tickets to go see Zed. Like, I just, I like to be very generous with my money. It's not something that I need to flaunt or brag about. And I feel weird even talking about it now. But I understand, you know, at least for me, I didn't come from money. So when I earn money and I can share that with the people that I care about and the people that I love, that makes me feel good. And Katie was talking about that too. She's like, I think he does it because it makes him feel good to help other people. Who cares what his motivation is? Like if he wants to share his money, let him share his money. And it, listen, Sheena needed the money and he helped her. I don't think it's wrong for her to feel conflicted. She's known this guy for a long time. Um, she doesn't want to forgive him. We see her in the the 
meditation where she's like, I don't want to be near him. I don't want to be touching him. You can tell she feels very conflicted by Ariana. So I thought it was very strange. Listen, Katie, I'm sorry. And Katie's like, if he offered to give me money while I was struggling in the pandemic, I would have sent that money back. I wouldn't keep it from him. He's just doing that because he wants to be manipulative and he wants to buy all of his friends. I do think that sometimes there is an element of people wanting to buy their friends. Um, but I also think people can just be generous with their money. And listen, if your friend is struggling and you can help them out, why not? You know, as long as, there, as there's no expectation. And listen, Sandoval's never brought that up. He's never thrown that in Sheena's face, even recently where he could have been like, listen, I've always been there for you, Sheena. When you needed money, I gave you money, Sheena. We've never seen him throw any of that in anybody's face. I don't even remember him throwing it in, in James's face when the engagement ended, you know? I'm sure he was disappointed that he lost out on all that money. But, you know, I think for Sandoval, there is an ego inflation, right? He does like that it makes him feel like a savior. He has a bit of a savior complex. And I think he likes to feed that by doing very big, generous things for people. But that doesn't mean that the motivation in doing kind things is entirely selfish, right? Like giving to other people, there's always going to be a selfish element to it, whether you're giving money to a homeless person, you're donating to your church, you're donating to a charity, whatever it is, there is a good deed part of it that makes you feel good as a person doing that. Um, so I just I didn't I get that Katie and Ariana don't like Tom. I don't love him all the time either. I think he's made a lot of really dumb, stupid mistakes, continues to make a lot of really dumb, stupid mistakes. I've criticized him plenty on this show. Um, but in this specific instance with the money, with the moolah, with the dinero, 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 I don't think that that was in any way self-serving because we'd never heard about it until Sheena herself brought it up years later. And I stand by that, Katie Maloney. I think Katie's just a little bitter. She's just not very... You know, I've, I met her at Sheena's live podcast for the first time. I met her last August at the bourbon room in the green room after the show. And I said hello to her. She wasn't very kind to me. She's just, I mean, I get it. She just seems a little, I don't know. She's not my favorite on the cast though. I've had my moments where I've liked me some Katie Maloney. She's not my favorite on the cast. Um, what else? What else? What else? We talked about Lala. We talked about Vanderpump. Um, I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you think Sandoval is self-serving and giving money? And do we think Jackson Brittany will go the distance? Let's see what the live chat is saying. Um, Lala holier than thou mentality. I don't think Lala has a holier than thou mentality. Um, so he does these things on his mother's dime. Did we forget he had his mom cash in her 401k? Was that pre-pandemic? I don't. Ooh. Okay, well, that's, I forgot about, I, he did have his mom cash in the 401k. Um, yeah, okay, that does add a different element to it. But I mean, it was still a nice thing to do. I'm sure his mom was proud. Kat, Kat says, I think that her emotions were coming from her actually really truly wanting to be friends with Tom and knowing it could hurt Ariana. She wants to be friends with him wholeheartedly. I think she's hurt and angry. Um, because it's only been a couple of months since the affair came out and she feels betrayed by Tom and Aria or by Tom and Rachel. Um, and I feel, I think she feels conflicted. Like this was her friend. I've said it, you know, many times as well. We all have friends that have fucked up to big degrees before. Does that mean that we just cut these people out of our lives? Um, you have to factor in whether or not this person, this is this person's character. Is this who they are? You know, and you have to factor in many different things and, and make that analysis has chosen to remain by Sandoval through everything. I mean, even recently, even after the New York Times stuff, like Sandoval and Schwartz are still always at Schwartz and Sandy's. I saw them, what was it, last week when when we went? Um, saw both Sandoval and, and Schwartz, you know? Um, yeah. Katie seems a little frigid. Katie does not like Tom, so nothing he does will ever be looked as a good deed. Yeah, I agree with that. Katie would hate Tom. Her husband was more devoted to him than her. That, ooh, that's a really good point, Ronnie. Ronnie Jean. Um, I would understand. I know Sandoval and Katie never liked each other to begin with, um, but I didn't even factor in the, the piece of it that Schwartz has such a loyalty and dedication to Sandoval. And I think 
I think Schwartz would prioritize Sandoval over his own wife sometimes. And I think that that bothered her. And she does have some, some, res uh, some resentment. Katie's sad. That's why she's not so nice. I mean, I don't want her to be sad. Uh, if they choose to let Sandoval back in and I was Ariana, I wouldn't want to hear much. They hate Sandoval or feel guilty, et cetera. Go ahead and choose your dumpster fire friendship and you'll see. That's a good point, Mallory. And here's the thing. And that kind of seems to be the position Ariana is taking is it's like, if you want to be friends with him, you can be friends with him. Go and be friends with him. And when he disappoints you, you know, you'll see. If anybody knows Sandoval, Ariana knows him the best. So I would judge her assessment of him overall. But at the same time, I feel like right now there's a lot of pain and betrayal, right? And so, you know, I think that there's a grieving process Ariana's going to have to go to go through before she's able to kind of really look at things with a clearer lens. Love is Blind. Did you watch? No, Nessa, I haven't watched the new episodes yet. I cannot wait to watch it, though. Because it's isn't this the wedding and then the reunions next week? Or is next week the weddings? I think, no, I think the weddings are this week. I can't wait. Literally cannot wait. So excited. Um, I Love is Blind is giving me everything. But I think they need to not do these, like, drag it out over multiple weeks. Like, give it to us, you know, quicker bite-sized, you know, give us bigger drops. Because when they drag it out this long, I'm like, oh, it's too long, right? Um, To buy the restaurant. Yes, they did take out the money to buy the restaurant. I'm not on the show, so I can't say. Well, you, you can be a viewer and have an opinion. But wasn't that mom's money for his investment into the restaurant? Yeah, that's what I remember it being. The 401k, she took the money out to help him pay for the restaurant. Uh, both things can be true at the same time. He's done nice things and also is a douchebag. Yeah, I agree with that. I think that's where I stand. He can do nice things for the right reasons, but he can also still be a dick. He can also still be a douchebag. And I think both things are true. I think, listen, as humans, we're not good or bad people. We're both. I am not a good person and I am not a bad person. I'm both. I'm human. I have parts of me that are good and parts of me that are bad. I have parts of me that are, I'm sure people would rave about and I have glowing reviews. And then I have the messy side of me. And I know, you know, there's equal, you know, we're, there's duality in who we are as people. So I think when it comes to Sandoval, it's easy to, even with Rachel, right? Even with Rachel, I think she's also naive and flawed and, you know, just trying to find her own. I think Ariana hit the nail on the head. She's, you know, a woman looking for identity in men. Um, I do have a lot of empathy for Rachel, even though I drag the bitch pretty often because her actions never fail to astonish me. The audacity of that cooch is like, wow. Um, but I do have a lot of empathy for the girl because I think she is very lost. I don't think her parents are guiding her correctly. I think she was a beauty pageant girl. Somebody said not to call her a beauty queen because she never actually won a crown, which shady, true, but shady. Um, listen, Raquel called herself a beauty queen. Remember in her first reunion when she was wearing that wild lacy dress with all the frill? Oof, that was wild. Remember? And she's like, oh, I know what you guys think of me. Oh my God, here comes Raquel, this beauty queen. And Kristen and Jax are just laughing. They're like, yeah, no, that's not what we ever that We didn't think here comes Raquel, this beauty queen. Um, but listen, I think when you're raised in that sort of element, there is like a, you know, Abby Lee Miller dance moms sort of, you know, pimping out of your kids that I think the parents are used to. You know, I think that's why they were so quick to release statements to the media. I think that's why they were so quick to give up the dog. You know, I think their priorities clearly are misguiding Rachel. And the hard part is it's like Rachel is a grown woman and needs to start making her own decisions and standing by those decisions all on her own. You know, um, I do have empathy for her and I do hope she figures her shit out because there's a lot of shit for her to figure out right now. It's just a bunch of messy diarrhea. And I'm like, girl, get it together. You know, huh. Could you imagine if every time one of your hypocritical friends attacked you, you weren't allowed to bring up any of the reasons you were in the right because of the show? I don't know what that's referring to, but I think you had a very good point, you name. Um, oh my God, Francie, that was so wild. So wild. Even Schwartz was like, what the fuck? Oh, the, the, I'm assuming you're talking about the New York Times. Um, 
What about the story about Ariana knowing about the affair before it came out and wanted it to be a story for the show? We've already addressed this um, on the past two episodes, Saturday and Monday's episodes. I don't think Ariana knew that. Everybody's reaction to the scandal was way too big. Um, they were still going, Tom and Ariana were still going out. They keep referencing the Valentine's Day, the date that they had in February. So if she found out about this affair in December, why would you then have this big romantic night out with Sandoval for Valentine's Day um, and be in couples counseling and just her reaction, the raw emotion you see from Ariana in the Scandoval finale last season to me, like these people are not that great at acting. If they were that great at acting, they wouldn't be on reality shows. They would be actors. You know, she should be Meryl Streep accepting her award for that performance in Scandoval's finale, in the Scandoval finale. I don't think that that's the case. I think that that is a flat out lie um, that I don't believe. Um, or maybe not a lie, but maybe there were like, there had clearly Rachel has something, right? Where she either she's just totally in a land of delusion or there was a piece of information that was, I don't believe that Ariana said, no, we're going to save this for a storyline next season. When has Ariana ever given a fuck about a storyline? You can say that about other people. You can accuse that Lisa Vanderpump of that. Like, you can accuse other cast members, other reality stars of fabricating things, stretching things out, whatever, for the sake of a storyline. Ariana Maddox has never given a fuck about being on Vanderpump Rules. She just didn't really care, you know? Um, Sandoval, very good at manufacturing storylines. Um, you know, I think some of the other cast members had other motivations. Sheena, Sheena I think, is good at stirring the pot to help, you know, storylines come to fruition. Um, Kristen Doty, great at, you know, making sure that there's a plot for us to follow. Ariana, even in the earlier seasons, you can tell she didn't even really want to be on the show. So, no, I don't believe that at all. Um, if you guys are watching this on YouTube and you're enjoying today's live stream, be sure to hit the like button, guys. Hit that like button. Hey, hey, hey. Um, Cassie says, my best friend started dating my other good friend. He cheated on her and I cut him off. How can you see your best friend so hurt and then be best friends with the person who made her feel that way? It's a great point. And I think that's why Sheena is so conflicted. I think she doesn't know which, you know, because think about it. Ariana is her best friend, but Sandoval is also her really good friend that she's known for many, many years prior to her relationship with Ariana. So, you know, you can have two best friends and kind of feel conflicted because you're stuck in the middle. Stuck in the middle with you. The dog doesn't appear to have any behavioral prob problems from what we can see. I mean, a little bit, right? We see him barking at the cats or getting excited. I mean, these seem pretty standard. Um, I don't know. We do, you're right. We don't really see. But also, that could be the editing, right? Lisa Vanderpump is an executive producer. She may want to you know, lean into Graham is such a good dog a little more. You know, I know they're putting the dog into training. I'm sure Lisa's helping with that, but I think everyone needs to pick their own friends. If someone wanted to stay friends with exes of mine, I would zero care. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, listen, um, I only bring this up not to rehash old shit, but I only bring this up because it's a situation people can understand and relate to, right? Everybody knows I had, you know, a falling out with Up and Adam. We were really good friends. We're not really good friends. The details at this point don't matter. However, when our fallout was public and, and you know, people online were, were um, starting to discuss it and talk about it and it was known that we had had a falling out, we have mutual friends, right? And some of those friends were like, oh, he invited me on his hot, messy podcast, which is no longer around, but whatever. Um, he invited me on his hot, messy podcast. Like, and I was like, that's great. Go do his podcast, do his YouTube. He's got a great platform. I'm not going to tell you, I'm not going to gatekeep anybody. If you want to go and do his show, I have no feelings about that. I think, you know what? Go promote your podcast, go promote your book, go promote whatever you got to promote. I ain't mad at you about that. Go do it. And know that, like, you don't have to pick a side, you know, you can be friends with him, you can be friends with me, I don't care, you know, and, you know, some people know the details of our falling out and, uh, you know, the details are what they are, but 
I just, I'm not the type of person that can gatekeep. I'm not the type of, I will let anybody be friends with whoever they want to be with. And, you know, you make your own decisions and I don't need to hear about it. I don't need to hear about your relationship or friendship with so-and-so, but go to you. I don't, I can't, you know, I can't gatekeep that, nor would I, nor would I want to. Um, the problem is that Tom is a textbook narcissist. Sheena has horrible judge of character. I don't think Tom is a textbook narcissist. I think we use that term too loosely. I think people have narcissistic tendencies. They have narcissistic qualities. But I don't think there are that many narcissists that are walking around today. I think people have a big ego. I think people are, there's this um, sense of self-importance. There's a lot of victimization these days. You know, people are more important to themselves than I think that we've ever been culturally. I think social media has contributed to that. I think media in general has contributed to that. Um, when you're on a reality show, of course, they're going to be narcissists. Katie's a narcissist. Ariana's a narcissist. Sheena's a narcissist. Like, everybody that's on reality TV has those tendencies, right? Otherwise, why would you? I have those tendencies. Otherwise, I wouldn't be right here speaking into a microphone, looking into a camera, you know, talking to everybody right now. There are 346 people watching this live stream right now on YouTube. Um, you, that doesn't stroke my ego. Of course it does. I wouldn't be doing this if it didn't. You know, that level of self-awareness, I, th that's where, cause I remember at one point I did have, um, uh, a friend that was a therapist and I asked her one time, like, do you think I'm a narcissist? I'm like, am I really that self-absorbed? And she's just like, first of all, the fact that you're asking that question and like having that level of self-awareness, one says that you're not a narcissist. And I've had conversations with actual therapists, not, you know, people on TikTok that like to give advice. Um, but like actual therapists and they're like, most people are not narcissists. They're selfish. And there's a difference between being selfish and liking your ego stroked and being a narcissist. I don't think any of the cast members on Vanderpump Rules are narcissists. I don't think Lala is a narcissist and I don't think Sandoval is a narcissist. I think that they are flawed individuals that have a big ego that gets inflated by being on a reality television show where they're told that their lives are so important. So if anything, all it does is boost their egos even more. But no, I don't think any of them are narcissists. A lot of people confuse arrogance with narcissism. Exactly, Cassie. I think that's a great point. There is that confusion um, because it's a convenient confusion. Like the number of people now that are like, oh my God, my ex was so toxic and I he was such a narcissist. I'm like, you're not that much of a victim, okay? You're a grown adult. You chose to be in a relationship. You saw the red flags. You continued to chase them. If I, I remember telling my mother this. Um, because I was like, you know, because I was also like, I feel like Sandoval and Rachel need to have a little more personal accountability for their choices, right? Everybody wants to frame their affair as a mistake. You don't accidentally have an affair for seven months. There's no mistake to that. The, those are deliberate choices, right? Um, and I was like, listen, and, you know, a lot of people are like, well, he manipulated her. He's so manipulative and she's so vulnerable. I'm like, she's not 12. You know, she's not a young, naive child. She's a grown adult that was living on her own in Los Angeles, away from her family, paying her rent, working her job, doing what she got to do, right? Grown-ass woman, Sandoval, grown-ass men, grown-ass adults that need to take accountability for their actions and the, the what they contributed, right? I told my mom, I was like, Rachel and I are practically the same age. If I came to you and was like, oh my God, this man manipulated me, I'd be like, you should slap me across the face, mother, because I am too damn old to be getting manipulated by some man. Like, Come on. I get it. Some people are very naive. And there are people that, you know, do have, um, like my brother, he has autism. He is vulnerable. He's 21. He's an adult. Yes. But he is more vulnerable. There are people that are vulnerable and there are people that take advantage of that. This is not that case. Stop making it that case. This is not that. Okay. Stop trying to make fetch happen. Okay. Sandoval's a terrible person. He has terrible character. Yes. He's not a narcissist and he did not manipulate Rachel. He's not that. You're giving him way too much credit. Love you, Zach and Zach Pack. Love you too, JC. Thank you for being a member for the last 17 months. Hi, Kim Stone, member for one month. Woo, woo. Tom made that money he gave away for us by doing videos. Oh, yeah. I remember that. Um, him and Schwartz did cameos. 
Kenichi is looking forward to the valley, but you seem genuine regardless of ego. He's far from genuine, uh, in my opinion. Yeah, I think he's lost some of that for sure. But again, ego and narcissism don't exactly mean the same thing, right? Sandoval's inability to take criticism from someone and apologize and reflect without saying but or what about is a narcissistic trait. Right. And that's one thing that that my friend who's a therapist explained to me. She's like, we have traits that are narcissistic. That doesn't make us a narcissist. People want to, you know, go on WebMD and look up, you know, traits of a narcissist and then start self-diagnosing or diagnosing people around them. Um narcissism and having narcissistic personality disorder are different. Sandoval is full on narcissistic personality disorder, but maybe not as bad as other people, but he is. Rachel is just fatal attraction. Okay. That's a good point. Narcissistic personality disorder and narcissism. Yes. Very different things. Uh, major difference. Um, Abu says, major difference between being a clinically diagnosed narcissist and an ego-driven self-obsessed is all about me, narcissist. Okay, everybody's got a, a degree. Could someone please teach Sandoval to stop using the word like so much? Listen, we're in LA, that's what we do. Thank you, Zach, for being and having an open mind and calling it like you say. Yeah, listen, I'm not trying to defend Sandoval. I just always like to look at all sides of the equation, right? I, I know people don't like me for that, but that's what you're going to get here. There are other shows that give you fluff content. There are other shows that are sensationalism. I'm not that kind of person. I'm not that kind of show. So sorry. If you want to feed your validations and your opinions, you can go tune into somebody else. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to analyze things critically. I'm going to try to be objective. I'm going to be a little shady. I may pop off on some bitches in the live chat. That's what you get. Oh, I'll also sing for you a little bit too. Okay. I'll give you a little rap verse and you'll drag me for it, but it is what it is. All right, guys, I think that's all I have for you today. Um, I appreciate you. <laughs> um, thank you guys. I appreciate you. I love you. You can always keep up with me at just plain Zach all over the internet. You can follow the podcast at no filter with Zach, and you can catch my new show disaster daters with me and my friend, Jeff. We break down our own disaster dating stories on top of reading some of your submissions. So stay tuned. Uh, lots more fun to come here on No Filter. We break down the tea every every week, Monday through Thursday, with bonus episodes on Fridays. I do Vanderpump Rules recaps on Wednesday evenings on YouTube. If you want to tune into those live streams, those are only on YouTube. I don't upload that to the podcast. It's me and my friend Josh. Um, yeah. I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. Have a wonderful rest of your Wednesday. Thank you for coming in here, coming in with an open mind, coming in with different opinions. I think that that's what I love is we're able to have different opinions. We're able to spar back and forth a little bit. And at the end of the day, we'll go drink our coffee and live our lives and know it's not that deep. Um, so I send you love. I send, you know, the gratitude that I have in my heart for everybody that continues to show up and support this show and leave us five-star reviews disaster daters, no filter. Please keep leaving those reviews because they mean some, they mean a lot. They help boost the charts and I appreciate you. We love you and Josh together. I love me and Josh together too. Thank you, Kay. Um, so don't be sure, be sure to not miss tonight's Vanderpump recap uh, Wednesday nights. All right. I love you guys. I appreciate you. Have a wonderful rest of your day and I will talk to you later. End up enjoy that coffee. I got mine right here. It's like my third, fourth cup. Um, yeah. Listen, if your eyes not twitching, do you even have caffeine in your system? That's my motto. All right. Love you. Bye.